Lancaster Central of the year, Brent can't hold back now. The postseason push is on for all the spring sports. And we have a couple of special features to get to. This episode is going to be more special than the time Bobby Boucher brought the Mutt Dogs back in the Bourbon Bowl. So let's get right to it. Baseball's had its ups and downs in 2018, the high being the play of senior outfielder and captain Sammy Miller. Miller hit his first two career home runs against Radford on April 8th and then at VMI on April the 10th, with that home run at VMI being a grand slam as a part of a career-high five RBI day for Miller and an 11-9 Longwood win. The Lancers hosted UNC Asheville this past weekend, Friday the 13th, and the Lancers swept the Bulldogs. Game one was a dominant performance on the mound, a 14 strikeout game for Stephen Farkas, which tied the program record as he picked up the win with seven scoreless innings. Then came the offense in game two, which was on ESPN3, a 15-12 victory as the Lancers scored a season-high 15 runs on a season-high 18 hits. Finally, Game 3, the Lancers saw Tyler Morgan outdo what Farkas did the night before. Now, in the back half of Saturday's doubleheader, Morgan struck out 13 batters in a complete game shutout with just five base runners allowed. Morgan was named Big South Pitcher of the Week for his outing, the first award of his career. His complete game shutout is the first for Longwood since Aaron Myers did it in 2014 against Ohio University. Longwood played some inspired baseball this past week, picking up its first sweep, and the Lancers are riding a season-long four-game winning streak entering this weekend series at home against Campbell. Well, the baseball team also has its share of inspirational stories off the field, like senior pitcher Andrew Corbett, who's overcome adversity just to make it to Longwood. Corbett was born with amniotic band syndrome, the same birth defect that ails UCF linebacker Shaquem Griffin. To learn more about Corbett's story, you can read the feature Striking Out Adversity on LongwoodLancers.com. Now on the field, baseball continues its run of games in the state of Virginia in the month of April with all 18 matches coming in April in Virginia. The Lancers are looking to climb the standings in the Big South, needing to finish eighth or better in the conference to qualify for the Big South tournament. Well, Longwood softball, the squad, the three-time defending champs in the Big South, they have watched the throne in 2018 with no problems. The softball squad had its biggest series of the year coming right here in Farmville to begin the month against rival Liberty. The Flames took the first game of the series 3-2 before the Lancers bounced back in the second game of a doubleheader by a 6-2 margin behind seven innings in the circle by freshman right-hander Sidney Backstrom and a big go-ahead three-run home run by freshman Jenna Dunn. Then came the rubber match of the series, Longwood and Liberty, the two teams first and second place in the Big South Conference. It was a 2-1 lead for Liberty, but the Lancers put the tying run aboard in the home half of the sixth inning, and then Carly Donovan stepped to the plate. The junior lefty ran into one, putting it out a go-ahead two-run home run that proved to be the winner as the Lancers knocked off Liberty 3-2 to win the series. And then the following weekend, an easy sweep at Presbyterian as the Lancers outscored PC 26-6 in the three games. Softball is right there with Liberty in the Big South standings, and the Big South tournament begins May 9th, hosted by Radford. Well, you know, Deadpool, he has the best fourth wall breaks, and our next segment is a show within a show, but not like an, a confusing Inception trip or anything like that. Now, as I'm writing this on April 13th and reading this Monday, April 16th, I'm trying to think of a cool Deadpool-related segue, and I'm failing spectacularly to find anything suitable for family television, so we'll just roll right along. Well, the Wade Wilson of our Lancer Central crew is Christian Reefsteck, and he has the behind-the-scenes look of the making of a Lancer Central episode. Go ahead and check it out. I'm Darius Thigpen, host of Lancer Central, Assistant Director of Athletic Communications for New Media, SID, Broadcaster, I do a couple things. My name is Autumn Childress and I am the Lead Director for Lancer Central. My name is Justin Mitchell and I am the Assistant Producer for Lancer Central. My name is Christian Reefsteck and I'm the Senior Editor for Lancer Central. I've had a couple people stop me and talk to me about a couple of different pieces that we've run, uh, particularly because we've been able to get it on Chantel uh, this year. That's been a really cool addition to that. I've had a number of people tell me I need to work on my game because Autumn keeps killing me in game, of course, so we keep playing on Chantel. Keep, people keep saying it, but that's been a really cool part of it, just getting to have that experience of people actually getting to watch this. We typically shoot on like a Monday, so Sunday night, Christian and I will come in here and get all of the graphics ready which can turn into kind of strange. But, I mean, it always works out for our favor because I think Lancer Central has turned out very well the past few episodes we've done. We had a really funny situation happen. I believe on our third recording of that year, our studio manager, uh, Clint Wright, was sort of messing around. Basically, he was pressing buttons when he really shouldn't have been. What ended up happening was that Darius started to show up on our monitor behind us 
in like multiple times. Like you know when you look at, when you have a handheld mirror and then you reflect that reflection into another mirror and then it kind of creates this weird inception effect. That's what happened with Darius. And we just could not fix it for the life of us. So we eventually had to just shut that monitor off for the rest of the recordings that we had that day. Honestly, it was probably one of the best situations I think I've, I've ever seen happen. Also, this is not normal attire if I'm ever editing. And then another fun thing for me was doing the actual interview uh, with CJ Roth. It was more like a learning curve because Darius is so good at it. And watching Darius do it at ease makes you realize how hard it actually is when you're actually on set. There have been those moments where it's like, man, it's been a long day, but at the end of the day, when it all comes together and we all chip in and we all make this work, it's worth every second of it. Women's Lacrosse has gotten some big time individual performances in 2018 with a couple of players at the top of the leaderboard in the nation. Senior Riley Dolan has already set the school record with more than 50 assists this season. Her 56 assists leads the nation this year. Keeper Imani West is also in the top 10 in the country with 151 saves this year. Now, speaking of records, senior defender Holland Royster, who has been a part of our Lancer Central team in the past, she set the program record with 11 cost turnovers in a 15-8 win against Gardner Webb. Lacrosse has just one match left Saturday, April 21st at 1 for Senior Day against nationally ranked High Point, which you can watch on the Big South Network. Big South Tournament begins April 28th. Now, men's tennis began the Big South Tournament as the five seed, facing the fourth seed Liberty this past Monday. Now, as a part of a solid regular season, men's tennis picked up four spots on the all-conference team as Amadeo Blasco was selected to the first team, while Julian Farthing, Valentin Popescu, and Reisei Sukai were all on the second team. Now, the four all-conference selections are the most in program history. Women's tennis will begin its run through the Big South Tournament Wednesday after finishing the regular season on the 9th. Now, full disclosure, we're recording Monday afternoon, April 16th, so if you want to get the full update on the two tennis squads, check out longwithlancers.com. Now, what we can provide for you is an update of sorts. Back in February, we had the two tennis coaches, Jonathan Medina Alvarez of the men's squad and Maria Lopez of the women's team, join us in studio. Comp students Patrick Sanderson, Megan Aylstock, Taylor O'Berry, and Alicia Anderson each met with the two coaches in their environment to fully encapsulate the relationship of the two lifelong friends coming from Venezuela to Farmville. You both need to accelerate more. You got to I'm from Caracas, the capital, and Maria is from Valencia, which is two hour drive. But the bigger tournaments, we always play at Valencia. So we always meet each other and interact, but it wasn't not of a bigger deal of when I came to America in 1998 to this academy called Crossever. I didn't speak the language. She was by herself, I was by myself. We were only 15 years old, so it was kind of like uh, we needed each other. So from that moment on, I think we, we developed a friendship that has been going on for 25 years. We had talked a lot about how, um, you know, how college tennis, how amazing coaching college tennis is and, and you know, how, what that brings to us as a coach. And I knew that he, he was definitely in a place where he wanted to, uh, to really look into that and, and grow as a coach and that was probably the only thing he had not accomplished um, you know as a, as a coach and as a player so uh, as soon as I find out that um, you know coach the coach that was here before and the position was open uh, you know I gave him a call and I said hey is this something that you um, you see yourself doing is this something that you you're interested in and, and uh, we had you know since we were kids you know, you know dreamed of the opportunity of actually spending uh, time together coaching together and so this was, this is definitely, you know, a pretty great and amazing opportunity for both of us. You're hitting the ball right and you're not hitting the ball you want. Bring it down. I, th I think that, what, you know, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm a lucky person that I was able to, you know, invest time into a relationship that even though we were not together, we were different sides and different moments in our life. It's like every time we see each other, it's like we never left. I think the most important is in the moment of the truth, when you're by yourself, that you have somebody there that he wants to be with you because of you, not because of what you accomplished. And, and that's what I have with her. It's like every time we see each other, it's like we never left. We were able to be strong enough to keep ourselves together in all the different times of our lives. Since we were 16, 20, you know, when you decided to get married, you decided to have a relationship, you still know that that's part of your life. You don't want to take that for granted. So that's why I'm, I'm extremely grateful for that. Well, before we wrap up, we do have a couple of people to introduce you to. 
Please join Longwood Athletics in welcoming new men's basketball head coach Griff Aldridge and women's basketball head coach Rebecca Tillett. Now Aldridge and his UMBC Retrievers, who were very good boys in the NCAA tournament, knocked off the number one overall seed UVA in the first round. Aldridge was a part of a turnaround at UMBC in the last two years that turned a middling program into a 20-game winner each of the last couple of years and darlings in the March Madness. Aldridge was recruiting coordinator and chief of staff for the program as well as director of basketball operations. Aldridge has local ties as a Norfolk native, played and coached at Hampton Sydney under Tony Shaver. Now on the women's side, Tillett was the assistant for the past four seasons at Navy, which is coming off back-to-back 20-win -back seasons. Tillett is also a product of the Commonwealth, coming from Williamsburg and a graduate of William & Mary. Tillett has skyrocketed up the rankings with coaching stops in high school and also serving as a WNBA scout for the Atlanta Dream. Well, one final note, a thank you. Thank you to now former cross-country coach Katherine Hansen. Coach Hansen has coached both the women's and the men's programs for the past 11 seasons. Daniel Wooten will serve as interim coach until a permanent hire is made after Coach Hansen stepped down. Coach Hansen has truly been an inspiration within the department, beating cancer twice and qualifying to represent the United States with the USA Triathlon National Team. Well, that's all that we have for this episode of Lancer Central, and that is a wrap on the 2017-2018 school year for us. To stay up to date on all the news, updates, and features you can handle, keep it locked to LongwoodLancers.com, watch for Longwood Athletics on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and listen to our minute update, the Longwood Athletics Sports Flash, weekdays at 520 on WBHL Farm Bowl 92.9 Kick and Country. Well, that's our show. Thank you for joining us on another edition of Lancer Central. For Autumn, Christian, Justin, and our entire Lancer Central crew, I'm Darius Thigpen, thanking you for tuning in, and we will catch you next year.